Hey everybody and welcome along to Watercolour Wednesday. We are live. Say hi in the chat. Just remember that I'm about 30 seconds ahead of you guys. So there we are. Hello. Hi everyone. Great to have you along on this sunny Wednesday. Summer's returned. And we're going to be painting this pink magnolia. How wonderful. So there's nine of you on already. Let's see if any more are going to join. So remember, um, our, with my Kofi subscription, you can look back at these videos anytime. Okay, they're always going to stay there. This is an unlisted YouTube um, live, but you'll be able to come back and revisit as many times as you like. So this is what we're going to be doing today, and I'll just take you through what I'm using. So to start with, let's talk about the ink pen. I know there's been some questions about fine line ink pens. Now there's two brands that I use and trust. Hey Jean! Um, and they are Unipin, which is the one I'm using today, and Derwent. And I sell these on my um, website, so if you're looking for fine liner pens, pop over there. The main reason be, to be careful is not all of them are water resistant, okay? This one is. But we're not going to use it until the end. I have my pencil and my rubber. Hopefully, unlike last week, I won't need to use it so much. Um, HB pencil is best, but I'm using a 2B so that you can see the marks better on the screen. Let me just make sure my volume's on. Yes, it is. I wasn't sure. Um, and then my brushes. So my trusted size 12 and my 6, which is covered in paint, actually. I did use it with acrylics the other day. Naughty, naughty. Okay, so they're the two brushes. We've got the pencil. Now today, for a change, mainly because I forgot to stretch my paper, I'm using a watercolour block. You see how thick that is? So I don't sell these, but I might soon. And um, watercolour blocks are really convenient when you haven't got time to stretch your paper and the pages are all stuck together around the edge. Okay, and then when you've finished, at the top there's a tiny bit that's not stuck down that you just slide a knife in or a palette knife and you can release your paper. Okay, so I'm using that. That's something I was working on underneath. Okay. It's, a, it's the same quality as the paper I normally use, so it's a 300 GSM cold pressed. So, you should have the picture down the bottom of the screen. And we're going to start by sketching out our flowers. Now, really, don't worry too much about how many flowers or how good your sketch is. Or if you have access to a printer, here's an idea. Why not shade over the back? Just shade over the back. You don't need tracing paper. Let me do a bit here and I'll show you. So you do need a softer pencil for this. So this is a 2B. Shade over the back and trace down. Okay, pop your paper down. Better to tape it in place if you're tracing. And then just go over the flower shape. Not sure where I shaded because I haven't done it all, and then you get a very soft impression of the flowers. Okay, so I'm going to sketch freehand, so it's going to look slightly different, it does every time, nice and loosely, just following one petal at a time. And down the top, they meet in the middle, down we come. So sometimes, guys. It's because I published the picture that we're doing, you may want to do your sketch ahead of the session, of the live. Um, that way you don't fall behind. The alternative is if you're sketching with me and you're a bit slower, just do some of them and then come back and sketch more later. There we go, so that's the outside petals in. 
Now, magnolia is beautiful. When I was growing up, we had a magnolia tree in the garden. And it's such a sight, isn't it? Short-lived, but such a wonderful sight. So if you're watching, there's 10 of you, let me know you're there. You should be able to type in the comments, say who you are, whether it's your first time or whether this is one of many. It's so very nice and lightly. You don't want your pencil marks to be too strong. We have a little petal coming out the side and some creases in the middle. This is a very loose ink. I'm putting my arm in the paint. So let's move them to one side. I do that so often. I sit there sketching and my arm's resting in my paints, which is not good. So we've got a couple of little petals at the bottom coming down towards us, folded over. Out we come to the side. Let's just pop those in. And then just underneath these petals, we've got the bud that it's grown from. Pop that in. I think there's two flowers here nesting side by side. And down into this first part of the stem. Down we come. Remember your stems will get narrower as you come down. So make sure they get smaller. When you're sketching and you're freehand working like this, a good tip is to look at the gap in between what you're drawing. So I'm looking at this shape here in the middle and looking how far apart, it will give me clues as to how close I've got to, to copy in the reference. Okay, then we're going to come down into another petal. Down we come, that nice point to the end and around. And then just look, have your reference picture close by. Look how far down it is before you bring your next petal in. And just follow that contour line around. I've just realised I'm really hungry. I've not had my lunch today yet and I'm starving. So if you hear any grumbling noises, it will be my tummy. Here we come. There's another petal coming out the side. Looking where it joins, where it joins there. Coming across that line in the middle. Okay, here we go again. So you could also fold your picture up once you've done the top one so that you can bring that closer. Just little things that can help you get that initial drawing done. And of course you could also just sit and watch and have a cup of coffee and relax and come back to this later and take your time. Down we come, down the side. Okay, I've got another little fold going on here. And then we've got another little petal, little devil that's pointing towards us, folded back into its point, a little bit behind. Joining them up, one up the top here, okay I've missed one, there we go, I've got one missing, I've got a big gap, up we go, and across, and that little one poking in. I do need my eraser. I did make a mistake. It happens to us all. No one's infallible. Well, not many. So we have two of our flowers in already. How are you doing with your drawing? No one's making comments. Are you all concentrating? 
too hard. So again, now I'm coming to this stalk, I'm going to look at this negative space in here. You could even draw that negative space in rather than draw the stalk, if you know what I mean. Okay, so I've got that shape in there, and then I can come into the stalk. It's quite knobbly and bobbly. It's not a smooth line. I've got another little bud at the side. Up and across. Out to some buds, some little leaves that are waiting to burst into life. I do love doing flowers. Here we go. Um, Colour-wise, if you want to start thinking about your colours, I'm going to be using Carmine, which is this very dark red. Okay, really dark red. And I've also got some quinacrinone magenta. So I might mix the two together for the flower colour. We'll see how we go. And we'll, it's always good to test your colours on a bit of paper. I'll also be using a little bit of green and some burnt sienna. That's pretty much it for the flowers. And in the background, again, green with a little bit of ultramarine blue. Okay, let's carry on with our flowers coming down the stalk. This one would definitely look really nice printed up as a gift card or just send in to somebody. Make your own gift cards out of it. Um, I'm looking now how far out this flower comes compared to the end of the stalk yeah so these clues are all there and it needs to extend a little bit from that stalk there's the bud there's that bud and then into our little flower that's not quite open yet I've made this a little bit bigger than the original, but it doesn't matter. There we go. Because I'm using a 2B pencil, I'm getting some smudges. That's why it's better to use a harder pencil for your sketching. Down we come. More little buds, more little leaf buds along the way down to the bottom and then we've just got one more to do coming off the stem at the bottom again look at that shape of the negative space look where the flower how close that pair first petal nearest to the stalk comes or just trace it down in we come so we are growing as a group. I'm delighted to say that I think at the last count we've got 38 members. So um, I know a lot of you are back at work now, but hopefully some of you are able to watch from work. Maybe take a lunch break at one on a Wednesday. You can watch the show and then paint along at the weekend or whenever you've got that spare time to have a go yourself and not all of you have joined my Facebook page yet okay so if you haven't joined the watercolor Wednesday group pop over to Eunice J friend artist and gallery and look under groups and in groups you'll see some different groups there but you'll see one called watercolor Wednesday that's the one just request to join Tell me roughly when you joined Kofi and I'll let you in. And the whole idea of that is it's a safe place where nobody else other than those in our little group can see your work. You can share what you've done. You can share other work that you've done. It doesn't have to just be Watercolour Wednesday work. Anything that you want to share with a group and maybe go there to leave me some suggestions for other future Watercolour Wednesday sessions that you would like me to consider. 
It's a really nice little community and we're only just starting to grow. So down we come, nearly there. I'm going to take this a bit longer. I'm going to extend my stalk. I think I've made this flower a bit bigger. As I say, it really doesn't matter. Just have fun and relax and enjoy the process of creating your art. Okay, so I've got that drawn out. I'm just going to get rid of some of those marks where I've been leaning and smudging my pencil. And we're ready for our paint. I'm gonna pop that under there so it's in shot. So you can see that bigger version as well as the small one. How's that? You can't see it all because I'm in the top screen, but. I'll do my best for you. Okay, so I've got my pots of water. I have my little fish swimming around. And today I've got my poppy. And I have my ceramic mixing palette. Now, if you use a plastic palette, hey Tina, no worries. Enjoy the ketchup. If you use a plastic palette, you will see a marked... Um, improvement if you switch to ceramic and I think I sell these for around seven pounds so if you want one of these daisy palettes it's just that the paint doesn't dry up so much and you it it's just a nicer feel nicer to use so I've got my palette there and we're going to do the background color first okay so let me make sure I've got that in shot move this down a little bit I'm always adjusting so you can see everything Okay, I'm going to pick up, I might get an interruption today guys, I am expecting a delivery. Um, I'm going to pick up a bigger brush, here we go, and I want you to wet your paper around the flowers. So I'm going to use my big brush first to do all the blank areas. We're going to be working wet into wet. Okay, just clean water over the paper. Now today, it actually doesn't matter if you leave some dry patches. Make sure it's nice and even. Avoid the flowers. I'm going to switch back to my size 12 brush in a moment. I'm just doing all this back area first. Now I've got quite a few puddles going on. So I'm going to use my smaller brush and spread those puddles out. Use them. Try and keep your flowers dry. Use that tip of your brush to come around the petals. Okay, as I say, in some places, I might leave the paper dry. In fact, what I'll do, I've just thought of something. I've thought of something that will help you. So let me do this first. Here we go. Use the very point of your brush where you're coming around a fiddly area. Let's come up close to the flowers. Tip your head down to the side so you can see where you've placed the water. And come between the petals. Okay. Once you've done that, I'm going to take a piece of tissue and I'm going to blot different areas and dry them off a bit. Because I want patches, and I want this to see, be a really soft background. So I'm just dabbing a couple of places, let them dry out. Okay, and mix up my background colour. So, water in your well. Pick up whatever green you want. I'm using my paints today, which is oxide green. 
and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it. A little bit of lemon yellow or cadmium yellow light. Touch more. Don't mix your colour too dark. Nice and fresh and zingy. And I'm just going to go in. Holding my brush way back here up the handle. Oops. I've splashed some orange. I'm just going to choose some areas to put this green on to give us a nice soft blurred out background. Be random where you place the colour. So this is oxide green or you could use sap green or you could just use blue and yellow to make your green. Here we go, just mixing a bit more colour as I go. If your colour goes on a bit strong, like that bit just did, I'm just going to spread that out, spread it out. Or you could use your tissue and dab some out. Coming in between some of these flowers. Have a nice wet brush, loaded with colour. There we go. Now what you do need to do is if there is a dry area of paper that's next to this colour, just take a bit of water for me and go around the edge where your wet paint is meeting dry paper. So it has somewhere to swim. Okay, now I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and add that to my puddle. In fact, I've changed my mind again. I'm going to take some ultramarine blue separately, really pal, so nice and watery, and just come in with some blue. You could use any blue you like and drop it in over the green in places so it's going to mix wet in wet nice wet brush loaded brush into the wet paint pop some blue down just wherever you want really don't try and follow what's in front of you just place it where you want that color to be and now I'm just moving it around with the tip of my brush, playing with that colour. Touch more blue in here. There we go, nice and soft and gentle. I'm going to lift a bit more colour out in places. If I don't like the look of it, I'll just grab my tissue and lift some out simple as that. It's nice and pow, nice and light. And you can see the shine on my paper from the water. And then you need to grab your hair dryers and dry this off. Here we go. dry. I'm just going to have a bit of my tea, give you also a chance to catch up. Oh, there's nothing like a nice cup of tea, is there? And today I'm using my Pedro mug. 
Hi, my little donkey. Okay, so now we're ready to paint our flowers. And again, we're gonna be painting wet into wet, nice and loose. We're gonna apply some color. We're also gonna leave some white areas in the flower. Not every centimeter of paper is going to be painted. So let's mix up a color. I'm gonna grab another piece of paper. I'll just be one second, guys. Sorry about that. Okay. And let's try some colours. So I'm going to show you my quinacridone first. Quinacridone magenta, which is quite pinky. It's a bit bluey. It's got a bit more blue than the flowers that I want. So I'm going to show you my crimson or carmine this is actually called carmine it's a really strong red to get it lighter i'm adding more water and let's try that's better i think the carmine suits these flowers spot on okay let's move that to one side now i want you to get whatever color you're going to use your watered down red and we're going to start in our petals now your background has to be dry and I want this really light, just going to pick some petals and using the very tip of my brush, play around, pull around, push and pull some colour, being sure to leave some white spaces. So you can use this as a guide. There's a bit of orange went down on my paper. So I want it really light, really watered down, the lightest colour. In we go. Use the tip of the brush when you come around the edge of a petal. Now, if you paint part of the flower, this petal up the top is a little bit darker than I wanted it. So I'm just going to clean off my brush and just come in with a damp brush and wipe some off. Okay, so it's lighter. In we go again, into that bottom of the flower, the little pod there, and those folded over leaves. Okay, so that's our first coat. Now I'm gonna make my paint a little bit stronger I'm going to go in and just tap and lift, wet into wet now, taking a slightly stronger colour and just placing your brush down and lifting off. Okay, tap down and lift off. And just let that play away in the water underneath. It will spread around, it will mix, it will do its own thing. And of course you can help it with the tip of your brush to direct it and move it where you want it to go. But don't overthink it. I'm going to take this petal here. I think there's someone at my door. Bear with me one second. Sorry guys, that was the delivery man that I've been expecting. Okay, so on we go. So we're going to do the same with the other petals. Water that down. You could have two puddles if you like. And come in with your light pink. 
nice and watery, leaving some white gaps in those flowers. Be loose, have fun, don't fret. I'm going to do two. I'm going to do the bud as well. Here we go. And then my darker puddle, a little bit more paint, and just splodge down, place some hot, some hits of stronger pink. Just let it flow. Here we go. I'm going to go into the tip of this leaf, this petal, make that one a bit darker. Just use the end of your brush, load it with paint, tap it down and lift off. Lift off. We have lift off. Here we go. Spreading that around a bit more, but leaving white areas at the same time. Just going to check in case that was someone who can't find the link. There is someone who can't find the link. I'll have to sort that out with them later. I don't know what the problem is. There we go. Okay, on to my final flower. I'm going to take some of that into that lighter mix. Then we come, spreading that around on the petals, leaving those white gaps. So this is our base layer, and then we're going to come in with our stronger um, crimson or carmine and just place where we want that darker colour, that darker saturation to be. Look how some of them get lighter as you go up the petal. So I'm going to go back down the base. And this time I've taken some paint straight from the pan. Get a bit stronger. Oops, I forgot the bud. Here we go. Drop that in whilst it's still wet. If it started to dry on you, just spread that out up the flower with a damp brush. Beautiful. I'm just teasing the paint around with the tip of my wet brush. So we've got darker pops of colour amongst our flowers. Okay, I'm also going to bring a little bit of this pink down the stem of this one. There's a little bit of hint of pink in the stem. And when we go over with the ink pen, everything's going to pop out. So I'll leave you finishing your petals. I'll just try and sort this lady out because she's a new member. Paula, are you on? If you are, type to let me know that you've managed to get it on. I can't seem to find out. So if you have managed to watch Paula, let me know. Okay, so that's doing nicely. Now you have two options. You can go straight into your stems and allow some of the pink to run through or you can dry them off. I'm just going to go and see what happens. Okay, so it's drying quite quickly anyway. Just soften that little area there. It looked a bit harsh. Okay. So I'm going to take 
my green and into the green I'm going to pop some of my burnt sienna that's this gingery brown burnt sienna into the green so we're getting this kind of muddy greeny brown color which is perfect for the stems and using the very tip of my brush just going in to those stems you can use a smaller brush if you find it easier these brushes that I sell have a wonderful point to them so you can do small areas as well as big and then I'm just coming out to the side with some of those little spiky bits okay I'm going to water that down a bit it's a bit strong I'm going to pop oops my lids closed a little bit more green in and a touch of yellow brighten it up there we go a bit more burnt sienna I'm going to come into these little leaves over this side. So this is a mixture of green, burnt sienna, and because I wanted it a bit brighter, I just added a touch of yellow. Down we come, following that branch down, under that flower. And we're going to take this colour, which is quite light, all the way down first down you come on the nib on the point your paint should be like milk fairly strong in color not too watered down this time i'm going to bring a bit in there paula yes you found it i was having a heart attack <laughs> I'm so glad you found it. Good to have you along. Okay. So I'm mixing a little bit of green and yellow separately. And I'm going to come in to the bottom of this stem where it gets a bit more green towards the bottom. Just playing with the colours, letting them play together, wet into wet again. So Paula, just so you know, this stays here for infinity, so you can watch back. You should be able to rewind as well and come back anytime you want, my lovely. Okay, I'm going for a bit more sienna now into my puddle, taking it darker. And I'm going to put a little bit of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. I'm just throwing those into my mix. Trying to see what colour I want, a dark green, there we go, there we go, that's what I want. Something a bit olivey, a bit natural looking. And whilst this is still wet, I'm just going to tap this darker colour in to the wet paint underneath. Just place it over the top, building up the intensity of your colours as you go, as you layer. Very tip of the brush, hold it nice and loose, don't get too tight, don't get too stressed. There we go. And to finish this, I'm actually going to take some ultramarine blue on its own. I'm going to pop some of that over the top in places where I want shadows where I want it darker and again the blue wet into wet is going to mix with the colours underneath and give you a slightly different green as it plays with the colours on the surface and then here at the bottom I'm just going to spread that out with a wet brush down we come take some up that leaf fabulous can you see how dark some of those stems have gone. A little bit more blue up here. Just here, where this stem's coming behind the flower. A little bit of ultramarine blue in there. And then, then I'm going to do deal with some of these little tiny buds. Picking up my green again. A bit of blue. Just have fun with it. And a couple of more little buds coming up this one. And we've got a very dark leaf at the top. 
So for this dark leaf that's just about to pop out here, I've just added a bit of ultramarine blue. A couple of little dots here and there of ultramarine blue again, if I feel it needs to go darker. Okay, so we're getting all sorts of colours going on in that stem. Okay, also, if you find that it looks too dark and you want to lighten it, if it's still damp, just take a dry brush and go in, touch down and soak up some of that paint. Okay, I'm going to lighten the stem under this flower. This is dried, so I've got a bit of water on my brush. I'm just going to tease that paint and wipe it off on the tissue. You can always reactivate your watercolour. Just go back in with a damp brush. And if you want a bit more green, I want a bit more green here. I'm going in with a bit more green. We can do whatever we want. Okay, now it just leaves us with the ink. So you need to dry this off because if you go in onto wet paper with your ink pens, they will bleed. And it, fine line ink pens have got such a fine nib as the title suggests. You don't want water seeping up the nib, otherwise it will stop flowing for a while and you have to wait for it to dry. So I'm going to grab my hairdryer and blast this yet again. Here we go. Be gentle. If you've got a lot of water there, don't go too heavy with the hairdryer. Take it slow and then increase the speed. There we are. So, just to recap, I used um, my green oxide for the background with some lemon yellow and a little bit of ultramarine blue, wet into wet, so wet that whole area and use it really diluted and light and just play with your colours. I then lifted some of that colour off with a tissue to have some white gaps in between the flowers as well. Then I use my carmine, which is this crimsony deep red, and watered it down for the first wash on the flowers, and then dropped in some stronger colour over the top. And then into our stems we had fun mixing up some green with burnt sienna, and then we played with some ultramarine blue as well to get the darker, darker colours. Now before I finish off, there are some areas I'm not happy with. On this flower here, my dark crimson is, hasn't blended into the colour underneath. So I'm going to reactivate the paint with a damp brush and just come back in, twiddling on the end where I want it to soften. I don't want a hard line, so I'm reactivating that paint and spreading it out, losing that harsh line. So you can always go back in with a damp brush and sort those. Now here it's worked perfectly. The darker colour that I dropped wet into wet has blended itself naturally into the flower. Okay, so to finish, ladies and gents, we're just going to take our fine liner and go over our pencil lines. But I really want you to do this nice and loosely and with broken lines. So don't do an outline all the way round every petal. In some places it's a solid line and then I'll just let it break and bring some fine lines into the petals. 
treat it like a pencil, like you're sketching. Now something quite important, it's hard to get across on the screen, in places where I want the, the picture to look heavier, stronger, I will make a stronger mark. So around the top of this flower, I'm pushing on my nib a bit harder to get a strong line. And then when I want it to be softer, I'll just ease off the pressure and go sketchy again. Okay, so you ch shift in the weight between solid, nice bold lines, and then like in the petal here, very fine, just skimming the surface, sketchy and light. So you can see the difference between a solid dark line and a softer one. I'm going to come round the stems as well. I absolutely adore ink and watercolour, or also known as pen and wash. It's a great, great partner to watercolour. Really good if you're painting on the go. If you're fortunate enough to go on holiday, take a little pad, take an ink pen, capture a sketch, and you can use this the other way round. So long as your ink pen is water resistant, you could sketch and then put your watercolour over the top. But just give your ink about a minute to seep into the paper and be fully dry. Here we go. So I want a harder line there. Sketchy line. Just mix it up. And you see your work pop into life. Nice and sketchy. I'm going to shut up for a minute now whilst I concentrate. <laughs> Treat your pen like a pencil. Now, if you haven't got a fine liner, you could use a felt tip pen or a biro, literally anything you can lay your hands on. But just make sure everything is dry first. There we go. You can see how it pops to life with that addition of the ink. Coming down the stem, I'm going to be very sketchy down the stem. I'm going to leave gaps. I'm just going to sketch and have fun. And remember what I said at the beginning, if drawing isn't your strong point, whilst you're getting to grips with watercolour, don't worry about it. Trace down Use a projector, whatever you need to get your drawing on the paper. Now this is Watercolour Wednesday, but if people request a drawing lesson, I'm quite happy to schedule one in, take you through some of the techniques. Here we go, I'm going to go heavy again this side, add a bit more weight to that side of the flower. So I've been super, super busy lately. Um, I've just finished packing an order for my mugs, so my Bone China mugs. Um, I have um, a retailer who owns souvenir shops in Scotland. I've just realised I've missed a petal. I'm going to come and fix that in a minute. And he's, he had his first order a couple of weeks ago, and they've sold out. So there's an English lady selling her Highland cow mugs to Scotland. How cool is that? So we've just finished producing, printing and packing 276 mugs. So 
I'm a bit jaded. <laughs> right, I missed a petal at the back here, so I'm going to pop it in. I'm going to show you, you can use your ink pen. Come in. There's a bit of yellow there, but nothing too strong. Give that a minute. Come into my pink. I'm going to stay away from the ink, actually, and just pop. Stay away from the ink and you're fine. There's another bit that I've missed here with the ink pen. Oh no, I haven't got it all, have I? Look, I missed some. So you can put some added detail with your ink pen if you wanted to. So like up here where this bud has some little lines going around it, I've just added those with the ink pen. You can increase shadows. Now I think I've done. So watercolour Wednesday, and I missed some more. You guys, you're not telling me. I'm getting slap dash, huh? There's a petal here at the side I missed, a tiny one. We can't have that. Has to be right. So now remember, your watercolours will always dry back lighter than when you first put them on. So you could go back in. If you want to, with some stronger colour here and there. But if you do this, okay, if you do what I'm doing now, what I insist you do is take a wet brush and just bring water around the edge of that fresh paint. Okay? Otherwise it will dry with a solid line. So I'm adding another pop of crimson there. And then I'm going to come in with some water either side creep up on it so it bleeds back and down the bottom let's take that a bit stronger a bit more paint at the bottom then the, my water watch what i do i take the wet brush and i come down with the point of the brush towards that fresh paint so it's got somewhere to go and bleed and give you a soft softness to the edge a bit more on this bud here same thing Add some stronger paint, take your wet brush, creep up on towards. The trick is not to have too much water on your brush. If you do, you can get a puddle of water that pushes back down into your paint and you want to avoid that. So, there we are guys. I really hope you've enjoyed this, whether you painted along live or you've watched later. Please remember to join my Facebook page. Just request, go to Eunice J Friend Artist and Gallery. Go to Groups and down in Groups you'll see Watercolour Wednesday. Click there and join. And then you can show me what you've painted from this session and any other work that you're doing. So thank you so much for supporting me through Kofi, for joining me this week for Pink Magnolia. And I'll see you the same time next week. Take care and have fun and keep painting. Bye. Bye bye.